Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you doing? I do hope you're okay. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the extra calm start to this week's podcast. Uh, I was playing a piece there from a book I've got called The Mindfulness Piano Collection, uh, a, a book of really beautiful pieces, uh, which I'll talk about again in, in a little, little while because my main topic today is mindfulness and mindlessness and uh, yeah and I'll play something else from the book as well a bit later on. I'm just going to chat first about a couple of crochet projects that I've got on the go at the moment. Uh, one of which I've shown you before if you've been here a few times and one of which I haven't. So the first one that I'm talking about is the Nature's Walk Blanket by Sandra of Cherry Heart. And th that, this is a blanket which um, has 12 different designs. Well, the original version had six different designs, but then there's an extra six bonus squares that you could buy. The six of the designs were free from a crochet along oh, quite some time ago, I think. Um, and, but then you could buy six more designs. So I decided I would like the 12 different designs and... Uh, I have just finished now making all 48 squares so I made four of each design and uh, I am now um, at the point of uh, yeah putting the squares together. Before I did that though there was the fairly long process of blocking the squares <laughs> and which <laughs> took me ages. I steam blocked them. What I did was actually cut out a square of just some cotton fabric in the size that I wanted each square to be. And then I pinned the each square on top of the cotton square on the ironing board. Sometimes I just needed a pin at the corner. Sometimes I needed more than that because, oh, sometimes the difference uh, between the size I wanted it and the size I'd actually crocheted it was quite big. But the steam blocking was just like a miracle. <laughs> It, you know, stretched it out and uh, I think in the pattern it does say that you won't see the full extent of the some of the designs until they're blocked because they've got little chains and, and gaps in them that do need to be stretched out by the blocking process. But um, no, so that was it. It was quite an enjoyable process just seeing these squares come to life and then having a, a, a big pile of squares all exactly the same size. So I'm currently beginning to crochet all of the squares together and I am not enjoying that too much. I like the look of the squares being crocheted together but uh, I don't like doing it. It's just so slow. It's taking me um, it's taking me ages to do it and so I don't know when this is going to get finished. <laughs> I can't wait to do the border. Uh, I really really love the borders of blankets um, but yeah part of the reason it's taken me ages uh, apart from it you know it's a bit fiddly to do when you put two sa sides two edges of the squares together you have to go through the um, front loop of one side and the back loop of the other and that's not such a hard thing to do I've done it before but the problem is the yarn or my my ability to use this yarn so the yarn I'm using is Stylecraft Bellissima and I have found it the most splitty yarn maybe, well, maybe not the most splitty I've ever used but pretty splitty for me and maybe it's the way I crochet I don't know some of the time I just sail along all right but other times oh it's just terrible I'm undoing stuff all the time because uh, yeah because I haven't gone through the uh, all of the strands so it's quite a loose twist on the Stylecraft Bellissima and it is lovely yarn I mean it's going to be a really nice blanket when it's done but oh it's been a bit of a headache well it continues to be while I'm busy crocheting all these squares together so uh, yes I, I'll update you that on, on the blanket when I've got a bit further with it but I am glad to have got all the squares finished and kind of on to the next stage 
So that's that blanket and I will leave a link in the description box if you're uh, interested in the blanket. I always do, I always try to make sure I mention um, anything, you know, any patterns and leave a link. So, um, okay, so the other blanket I'm going to show you is actually one of the things that set me off thinking about being mindful or mindless. And um, it was when I decided, before the last camper van trip, I decided I want to ha wanted to have a really, really easy project to do that where I didn't need to look at a pattern and where I didn't need loads of different colours uh, to use, but just I was just be working from one ball of yarn, one nice big ball of yarn. And so I decided... <laughs> Uh, oh yes, so the other thing that uh, kind of prompted me to do this was that I was watching a lovely podcast, quite a new podcaster called Lily. Her, her YouTube channel is called Lily and the Bee and I recommend you go and take a look. She makes all sorts of, uh, she makes lots of toys plus other things, practical things and uh, she makes very quirky toys, mostly sewn I would say. Uh, but oh they're really lovely so and she's a very lovely lady and she's uh, she went right out of her comfort zone to start a YouTube channel as as lots of us do and she's just getting better and better so yeah you could go go and pop over and, and uh, say hello to her in the comments uh, yeah anyway so I was watching her and it was so it was Lily who introduced me to uh, a new yarn that I hadn't seen before it's called Yarn Smiths pebble haze prints and so not only did was I attracted to the colours but I was also attracted to the fact that each yeah, um, colourway has got the name of a, a beach around the UK and one of them is Seam which is what, uh, probably our closest beach to where we live here in Durham in the UK uh, so I thought, right, that's that's the one for me. And it was just perfect for what I had in mind as a project that I wanted to take away with me. Uh, and the, um, the, the, the yarn comes in 150 gram balls, so that's quite good. And I decided I would just use all of the one colourway. Um, and that means that for going away, well, I didn't take a spare uh, one even. I just started a new ball when I went away uh, to in the camper van so it was perfect and so then I wanted a perfect pattern that I would just know off by heart and still had a look through a few and decided on the uh, v-stitch uh, pattern I did get I did start myself off uh, on uh, by looking at the attic 24 website uh, but every row is the same it is such a lovely looking stitch and you get this lovely straight see that lovely straight edge really neat edge so neat that you probably you don't really need to put a border on it um, but although I probably will because I love doing borders but <laughs> um, but look at the colours it's just Gorgeous. I just love the way it all just blends. Um, the, the yarn itself, it looks like it's a very, very fine eye cord, so like a little tube of knitting. So it's absolutely gorgeous to crochet with. Definitely no splitting with this one. And even when I've finished one ball um, and started another, you can't really tell uh, you can't tell where I've joined it. You know, the colours just all blend in so beautifully. So I am a big fan of this. So I've bought nine balls of this because I'm planning to make a nice big blanket. And I think this might become one of the camper van blankets. Oh, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. It feels lovely. It's made of 67% um, cotton and 33% acrylic. So I, I've not knitted a, a blanket with anything other than no I have knitted a wool one before a merino wool one 
that was my first one and I didn't realise how expensive that was going to be. So mostly I've used Stylecraft Special DK or the Stylecraft Bellissima, which I'm using at the moment for the other blanket I'm doing. Um, but this is really, really lovely. It's very, very soft and I already know this is going to be one of my favourite blankets. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, as I say though, it, it was it kind of made me think about how we just sit and do a project. Sometimes we don't want to even to be reading a pattern. We just want to sit and move our hands and just be really, really peaceful. And so I decided I would write down a few thoughts about this. And one or two other things inspired me to think about it as well, which I'll talk about. And while I'm chatting, I'm just going to show you videos from, oh, two or three years ago, some sometimes two or three or four years ago uh, of me just sitting, crafting, knitting, crocheting, just, just while I chat to you. I would guess that for the majority of the time we engage in whatever craft we're doing without actually worrying about whether we're being mindful or mindless. We certainly don't have to be thinking about these words in order to enjoy our crafting time. But sometimes I find it interesting to think about topics like this so that I can weigh up whether it might be beneficial for me to know about them. And that's why I'm sharing my thoughts with you today and maybe it'll give you a bit of food for thought too. There's been quite a trend in recent years of people talking about mindfulness and how being mindful is very beneficial for your mental health. And I've often heard people talking about doing activities mindlessly. These words, mindful and mindless, are used so frequently these days that it's easy for us to lose sight of what they really mean. So, for a definition, Mindfulness can be described as the basic human ability to be fully present, aware of where we are and what we're doing, and not being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. Mindlessness, on the other hand, suggests that we're doing something on autopilot without having to think too much. It might mean taking your mind away from the present moment and maybe even distracting yourself from unpleasant situations. All the research bears out the claims that there really are benefits to be gained by spending some of our time being mindful. It's been shown that it can reduce stress and anxiety and even manage pain. For several years now, there's been a growing number of things that we can buy to encourage us to have mindful moments such as self-help books and colouring books. And there are even books of mindful piano music like this collection of pieces that I mentioned earlier, uh, which actually includes some colouring pages too. It's designed to help the pianist to focus right in on the experience of playing some relaxing music in a mindful way. So before each piece, before the music for each piece, it gives you some things that you could think about while you're playing. And as I've said, I'm going to play you another piece from this book shortly. The concept of mindfulness is extended into all kinds of crafting. For example, one of my favourite crochet books is called Mindful Crochet by Emma Leith. I love these words that Emma writes in her introduction to the book. If you take one thing away from this book, let it be this. Nothing is ever wasted. There is value in everything. The time spent making something that doesn't work out, a pattern gone wrong, or a colour combination that doesn't hit the mark, none of this matters because it's all part of the journey and we learn something with every stitch. Our body holds on to the memory of the movement, so enjoy it for what it is in that moment. I was interested to come across a range of Knit Pro knitting needles and accessories called the Mindful Collection all in muted calm colours where each knitting needle has a word printed on it that you might want to focus on while you're knitting, like dream or peace. I can see that it would be easy for people to be a bit cynical about this, but I do think it's rather a nice idea. It just reminds us of the soothing nature of our craft. One article that I read suggested that what we need is a balance between mindful and mindless activities. 
Some researchers suggested that the unconscious mindless processes that we all have shouldn't be underestimated. If you're trying to be constantly mindful, it's just too hard for our brains to function properly in all aspects of our daily life. Being able to flexibly use both mindful consciousness and automatic mindless processes in the right context and to switch back and forth between the two makes the most of our brain's abilities and opens up our potential for success and well-being. There are definitely benefits to spending some of your time being mindless. There are projects or activities where we don't have to think too much about what our hands are doing. And that allows us to give some of our attention to chatting to someone or watching the television. When you're doing something mindlessly, you might just enjoy the feeling of your body moving, even if it's just your fingers. Movement does help to regulate the body and mind. It can be very soothing and it can also keep you alert in situations where you need to pay attention to something else. If you're using colouring in as a means of zoning out for a while, it's pleasurable without being too challenging because the image you're colouring in is already there and you can just experiment with different techniques and colours and materials if you want to. However, I don't really like using the word mindless about what I'm doing. I suppose because of its rather negative connotations and the fact that it almost sounds like a criticism. Uh, I tend to just say that I'm doing something re that requires less concentration. It still needs a certain amount of input from my brain. And probably most of us who do creative things find that we want different projects depending on the circumstances and how we're feeling. Sometimes we're up for a challenge where we need to concentrate hard on what we're doing. And at other times we just want something easy, repetitive and comforting. I was watching an interesting podcast a while ago called Forest and the Wool, where the lady was chatting about the terms mindful and mindless. And she concluded that it was better to think in terms of being an observer of what we are doing. She recommended spending just 10 to 15 minutes of our crafting time, being very conscious of what our hands and bodies feel like as we create. So if we're knitting, we might observe the feel of the needles or the yarn or the way our body is sitting while we work. This to me sounds like a very useful thing to do. For example, I know that sometimes I become aware that I'm not sitting in a very good position and that it would be beneficial for me to change my posture so that I don't do any damage to myself. So I'm not sure I want to use the terms mindful or mindless when I'm knitting or crocheting or whatever, but I do like the idea of being intentional and sometimes paying closer attention to the movement of the needles or hook or sewing needle. And recognise that there are times when we can become totally absorbed in what we're doing, whilst at other times we're not needing to pay so much attention to our activity. While we're being intentional, we can recognise that our activity is inducing a feeling of peacefulness. We can be soothed by the rhythmic, repetitive motions of our hands. We can enjoy keeping our hands busy in the knowledge that we're making good use of our time. We can become so absorbed that we create our own oasis of calm amidst the chaos and noise and worries of the world outside. We can recognise that our creative hobbies can offer us positive feelings of well-being and of raising our self-esteem. We can feel good about creating something with our own hands and gain a sense of achievement that can boost our mental health. So just to sum up, mindfulness is worth striving for because it can give us an oasis of calm in our busy, complicated world. Mindlessness is not necessarily a criticism or negative state. It can be a very useful part of our day. In order to take the best care of our mental well-being, we need a balance of mindful and mindless activities. And finally, there are many benefits to spending a bit of time just observing ourselves and engaging in our crafts in an intentional way.
So I, I hope you've enjoyed uh, hearing my thoughts today about mindfulness and mindlessness, particularly in in relation to being crafters. But but really, you know, those topics can apply to anything that we do in our lives. And um, yeah, maybe it's just prompted you to think a bit a bit more about what it's like. You know, what you hands and your arms and your body is doing while you're busy with your whatever craft it is that you're doing. So I'm going to leave it there though for today. I'll be back again very soon but until then take great care of yourself, keep nice and busy and I will see you again very soon. Okay then, bye!